the telencephalon or cerebrum is the largest portion of the central nervous system. The telencephalon consists of two cerebral hemispheres, hemispherium cerebri dextrum and hemispherium cerebri sinistrum, divided by the longitudinal cerebral fissure, fissura longitudinalis cerebri. The corpus callosum joins hemispheres to each other. Conscious thought processes and all intellectual functions originate in the cerebral hemispheres. Much of the cerebrum is involved in the processing of somatic sensory and motor information. Somatic sensory information relayed to the cerebrum reaches our conscious awareness and cerebral neurons exert direct, voluntary or indirect, involuntary control over somatic motor neurons. The basal nuclei, nuclei basalis, are paired masses of grey matter that lie in the inferior part of the cerebral hemisphere in close relation with the internal capsule and the floor of the lateral ventricle. They are embedded within the central white matter. Here they are the basal nuclei on axial section of the brain. Number one is nucleus caudatus CNC, that means caput nuclei caudati. Number two is nucleus lentiformis NL, which consists of putamen P and globus pallidus GP. These four structures are combined in corpus triatum. Number three is claustrum, CLA. And number four is nucleus amygdalaidum, which is not shown in this section because of location in another plane. So the classification of the basal ganglia is as follows. Now, what are the functions of the basal nuclei? Basal nuclei or basal ganglia appear to be involved in the selection of appropriate movements and suppression of inappropriate ones. Disorders of basal ganglia cause either too little movement, akinesia, or abnormal involuntary movements, dyskinesia, as well as tremor and abnormalities of muscle tone. The claustrum appears to be involved in the processing of visual information at the subconscious level. Evidence suggests that it focuses attention on specific patterns or relevant features. The amygdala is more closely related to the limbic system and it gives emotional coloring to human behavioral reactions. The globus pallidus controls and adjusts muscle tone to set body position in preparation for a voluntary movements. To better understand the relative positions of the basal ganglia in the cerebrum Let's draw a basic diagram together, sequentially. So, this is axial section of the brain. So, RCC is rostrum corporis callosi. And now, SPCC is splenium corporis callosum. 
Now, TH is a thalamus. Now, C and C, caput, nuclei, caudati. NL is a nucleus lintiformis. It consists of T, putamen, and GP, globus pallidus. Now, CLA is a claustrum. All the structures of brown color are the gray metal structures. And now, the white matter. First of all, CI. It is capsula interna. Then CE, capsula externa. And most external capsule, capsula extrema. We are almost finished depicting the basal ganglia. Now let's additionally draw the structures that are always present on the axial section of the brain. So SPVL, what is it? It's cornu posterior ventriculi lateralis. And now CA Calcar avis, an elevation on the medial wall of the posterior horn. It is formed by the projection of calcarin sulcus, which stretches on the medial surface of the hemispheres. So, SC is calcarin sulcus or sulcus calcarinus. Now, F fornix, exactly columna fornices, and CSP, cavum septi pellucidi, or so called fifth ventricle. Now, cerebral hemispheres, axial section, diagram, and MRI image. Capsule interna is highlighted in blue. Try to recognize all the anatomical structures in the MRI image. First of all, this is RCC, Rostrum Corporis Callosi. The black structure, black cavity behind it is anterior horn of lateral ventricle and this is CNC caput nuclei caudati. It forms lateral wall of anterior horn of lateral ventricle. Now this is F. Here it is fornix or columna fornices. And this is septum pellucidum. So, behind the fornix, this narrow cavity is ventriculus tertius, third ventricle. Here it is, between two thalami. So, here it is thalamus, and this is also thalamus. And now, we can see the foramen of Monroe. The arrow demonstrates on the diagram foramen of Monroe. The foramen which connects third ventricle and anterior horn of lateral ventricle. So this is foramen of Monroe or foramen interventricular. So if it is the capsule interna, so, laterally to it, we can find nucleus lentiformis. 
Pteridis, Nucleus lentiformis, which consists of Putam and Globus pallidus, three dark structures, Putamen and Globus pallidus. Altogether, they form the Nucleus lentiformis. Laterally to it, we can see white matter. Inside of it, there is a claustrum which isn't quite good seen, but nevertheless we can distinguish white matter which divide nucleus lentiformis and cortex of insula. So this is an insula. In our diagram, cortex of insula is here. So this is sulcus lateralis or sulcus silvi. If we try open the parietal lobe and temporal lobe, we can find this insula. And now, posteriorly, here it is SCC, splenium corporis callosi, again white matter, and uh, this black structure. Again, it is the posterior horn of lateral ventricle. This is sulcus calcarinus, which forms here calcar aris. Now the question is, where is the amygdala? Let's try to find it. Let's look the relationship between the thalamus and the basal nuclei, the left side aspect. Here it is. Number one is caput nuclei caudati. Number two is corpus nucleus caudati. And number three is cauda nuclei caudati. So number four is amygdala or corpus amygdalaidum. We have already found it. Number five is a thalamus and number six nucleus lentiformis. good picture. But how do we represent these relationships in the whole brain? This way. Here it is an example of lateral ventricle. Here it is of blue color. Nucleus lentiformis capsula interna, amygdala, and all these structures we are looking from the transparent cortex or hemisphere of cerebrum. Now let's try to move it. I rotate and we can see that from left side I have colorized of the nuclei. So here it is, the thalamus, left thalamus and right thalamus. Here it is, the body of caudate nucleus from the right side. And here it is, the amygdalaid body. Now, I try to move laterally. And what is here? It's globus pallidus. I made it transparent. So we can see this putamen, this thalamus, and between them are globus pallidus. So to find it, we should try to look this space 
between Putamen and Talimus. Now let's look at another scene. I click to the menu Scenes and this basal nuclei with another section. So what is this blue structure? Lateral ventricle, left one and right one. Between them third ventricle, aqueductus cerebri and fourth ventricle. We can see that thalami left and right surrounds third ventricle, which is narrow cavity between them. Here it is, the place of connection of lateral ventricle and third ventricle. So practically it is foramen interventricular. Now I turn the specimen, this model, and we can see putamen as a part of nucleus caudatus and this structure is corpus nuclei caudati. Between them is white matter structure, capsula interna. It divides nucleus lentiformis and putamen. Nucleus lentiformis and corpus nucleus caudati between each other. And now I turn from the right side, and here it is, the putamen, which is made transparent. Now, I do this way. So, we can distinguish all basal ganglia together with ventricular system of the brain. And now let's look at the structure together with one hemisphere. So I click the menu, choose the scenes, and this scene, basal nuclei in left hemisphere. Hemisphere was made transparent, so we can see basal ganglia through hemisphere. And when I turn, we can see that right hemisphere is absent and left hemisphere is present. So it helps us to understand relationships between the basal nuclei, ventricular system, and hemisphere and brainstem.